So we'll go into this folder. Now we have these other things from before. We'll just get rid of them and we'll do our TP stuff in here. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna send you my code. Um, that's proprietary. Okay. So we'll go with new and then we need to make a function because we want to solve this. We're gonna make a function to solve the math for the TP. And then we're gonna make a script where we define our variables, call the function to do the calculation and then plot a simulation. So new function, we will call this one solve TP. And let's see, what are the inputs to the function? Let's go back here. It, do we always need so many folders it, to simulate something or can we like do it in one page, like in one you, folder? Completely? You can have it in one folder. As long as all of the scripts and functions are in that same folder, then that's what matters. So just make sure you, don't, you just don't have things in different folders that you're trying to use at the same time. Just one folder should be fine. Sounds good, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the outputs of this function, we want it to calculate the unknowns. So the outputs of the function are going to be the unknowns, R1 and theta three. So here, we'll type those in right up here. R1. Are you in the command window right now or, or a script? The, right now we're in a, the editor window. So this is, um, we made a function. We did new function. Yeah, the command window is back over here. Okay, so R1 and then theta three, we'll just call it T3 for short. And then we need to put in comments. So let's say solve unknowns for TP. And then we need to know what are the inputs and what are the outputs. So inputs, the inputs are going to be everything that's known and then like the actual input on the mechanism. So So that's going to be um, R2, R3, theta 1, theta 3. And then outputs, that's going to be the unknowns, which are R1, theta 3. Oh, wait, sorry, this should have been theta 2. There. So then the first thing we're going to do in the code, we remember from back here, we had to solve for theta three before we could solve for theta one. So we'll just type those two things in here. So we're going to solve for theta three first and solve for R1 second. So we'll get rid of these things because they are not relevant. So then we just put in our math right underneath these. So we have theta three equals 180 degrees minus theta two. We end with a semicolon. But MATLAB doesn't use degrees, it uses radians. So 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. So we have to type it like that. Um, oh, actually we forgot to put in here our input arguments. So here we need to put things in whatever order came from. So let's say that is R2, R3, theta one, data two. So we can use, we need to use things called those exact things. So that's why we have T3 matches to this 
T3 up here, and then T2 matches to that T2. So then we need to solve for R1. So let's get the equation for that. R2C2 minus R3C3. Well, MATLAB is not gonna recognize the abbreviation. So the way we need to write this is actually typing out all of the math. So R2 times cosine of T2, like that. And then R3 times cosine of T3. Now here, if we look over on the right side, then it gives us this little warning. A warning is input argument T1 might be unused. So we look at here, we actually didn't end up using theta one in our equations because we got rid of it through the simplification. So we can actually take out theta one from this because we don't use it. We'll take it out from here. So then we need to save this. Save as, we'll call it solve tp.m, it's a file name. The file name up here has to match exactly this part. What happens if the title doesn't match? Then MATLAB can have trouble finding your function and it can give you an error like file not found. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now is make a script to call this. So we'll go new script. It'll show up here, so let's put a header on it. Um, so start with Did your you name. Did you do a live script or just a regular? No, no, don't do a live script. Just do a regular script. Okay. So let's think about what needs to happen in this code. The first thing we need to do is clear out any junk that was already existing. So that would be the close all clear CLC, all that stuff, um, like we have for project zero. So then the second thing we need to do is define the knowns and the input. And then once we have the knowns and the input, then we need to calculate the unknowns. And then if we, once we calculate it, then we will plot, plot mechanism. So those functions we made, um, we're gonna use, pull those from that to here, right? To help solve for those. Yes, that is correct. So the first thing we'll put in here is, let's go back to this, we'll put in our knowns. So R2 equals, we can just pick something. Um, let's say, how long is a normal TP? Like 10 feet, R2 equals 10. Now R3, we know that R3 has to be the same as R2 because that's just how the TP works and that's how we got these angle constraints to match. So we'll type here R3 equals R2. That way, even if we change R2, R3 will up update automatically. Does that say R2 equals 10 or? Yeah, R2 equals 10. It looks like a minus sign. I think it's just good. Okay, no, it, it is an equal sign. They're just kind of close together. So we could make R2 be anything, but we're gonna make it be 10, just for this example. And then R3 is the same as R2. So theta one, we got rid of, so we don't really need to put it, but we can if we want to, P1 equals zero. So then we need to find the input. 
So in this picture, it looks like theta two is about 45 degrees. So we can say T2 equals 45. We need to convert to radians. So times pi over 180 converts to radians. For the first time through this, I'll make, I'll show y'all how to get it as just a static plot. And then I'll show you how to change the code to make it do an animation. All right, so any questions so far? We've defined the knowns, we've defined the input. We have our solve TP function. So now to calculate the unknowns, we'll use that solve TP function. So we can, Copy and paste this. And we'll end with semicolon. And you'll notice here, like, so if I don't put the semicolon, you'll see over on the right side, there's this little orange bar. And it tells you terminate statement with semicolon to suppress output. So that means put a semicolon here or you will get junk printing to the command line. Now, if you wanted to know what R1 and T3 were, then that's fine. You can take the semicolon away, but um, we'll we get putting it in a plot so we don't necessarily have to know. We don't need it to print out the exact value unless that was specified somewhere. So let's, let's run this so far and just make sure that it gets through the calculation okay. So we'll save this. We can call this whatever we wanted, but we'll just call it TP simulation. Um, note for file names. MATLAB cannot understand a file name that has a number or a space. So that's why I smush my words together like that. So let's run this and see what happens. Hey, it ran all the way through, no problem. That's, good. That's always good. So let's look here in the workspace. We can see R2 is 10. R3 also came out to be 10. That's just good. Um, theta 1 is 0. Then theta 2 and theta 3 got calculated. And just as a reality check, let's see if those add up to 180 degrees. So T2 plus T3 that's pi, that's 180, good. So it got that, it got that equation all right. And then here R1 is 14, um, which that, that makes sense, right? Because if each of the legs are at 45 degrees and they're 10, then R1 is gonna be square root of two times 10, which is 14. So, okay, so this got through the calculation fine. Now let's see what happens if we take away the semicolon it'll spit out R1 and T3. We don't necessarily need those, so we'll keep the semicolon there. And it's gonna have them in the same order. So this is why we do the copy and paste of the function name um, with those same variables to make sure we get things in the right order. Because if we messed up the order here, let's say we said T3, R1, and then we run this, Oh, and then we run this. It, it has not calculated wrong because it the function was blind and it only understood things in the exact order it took in. So it didn't know that you had them switched out here. So that's why copy paste is always good. R1, T3, just make sure you do things in the same order as the function has it defined. Um, also, you'll notice here, if something has an asterisk on it, it means it's not saved. When you run something, it saves automatically. So you see the asterisk went away. Now, sometimes you'll get this .asv 
things show up, that's not going to hurt anything, but you don't need it. So we can just get rid of it. It's an autosave version and you can't, you can't use it. So I'm not sure why it shows up, um, but it's not necessary for your code. So just don't be so, alarmed if those things appear. So that R1 can, is, is changeable, right? That value is going to change with the angles. Yes, that will change with the angles. So, okay, that, that's, a good, that's a good point. So we ran it for 45. Mm -hmm. Got 14, 2.3. So let's say, what if we changed it? Instead of 45, we made it be 30 degrees. We get different numbers. 60 degrees. Different numbers again. And this is a good reality check. 60 degrees, R1 turned out to be the same thing as R2 and R3. 60 degrees is an equilateral triangle, so we're good. So actually, before we plot, we need to calculate the, lo the XYZ location and space of each joint. If we go back here, we need to define some of these points. So let's say this one is the origin. We already know that's zero, zero. Um, this, let's call this P23, because it connects vectors two and three. And maybe this can be P13. And this, P0, because it's the origin. So we need to figure out what is P0, P23, and P13. Oh, P0 is zero, here. zero. Yeah, P0 is zero, zero, zero. So we'll have P0, X equals zero, P0, zero, Y equals zero. Now P23, x so we'll have this point the x and y components so it'll be r2 sine oh. theta 2 for the y and r2 cosine theta 2 for the x so p23x equals r2 times cosine theta 2 p23y equals r2 times sine theta 2 then the last point is P13. There are two ways to get to P13. Okay, so we could have either gone, we could either go this way, just along R1 and get there, or we could start the origin, go the other direction, go up along R2, down along R3 to get there. So those should get the same answer. <laughs> um, so generally, just do whatever is the easiest. If for some reason your mechanism does not connect to itself, then you know there's a problem and it's probably because you messed something up when you were going around your loop. P13x is going to equal R1 because it's only in the horizontal, and P13y is what? Zero. Yes, because it's on the ground. So we've got these points. So we'll just make a vector for x. x points equals p0x comma p23x comma p13x. So this, this thing that we're doing here is pretty similar to the way that y'all did the initials in your, for your name. And we'll have y points equals p0y, p23y, p13y. All right, now finally to plot it, plot x points, y points, and a color. So let's run this and see what happens.
All right. We got the TP. So that's good. Now, what if for some reason, let's say we want the ground to be a different color than we want the two legs to be. Because the ground is not, because we want to show like the TP is going to be sliding on the ground. So maybe we want the ground to be green and the legs can still be blue. So here, we would have to define one line for the ground and one line for the legs. So for that, let's see. So then if we wanted, in, in that case, we can name each of the legs. So let's say leg two. For leg two, we need the starting and the ending points. So the starting point is P0, P0, X, so we'll go leg two X. This is, calculate the lines. So leg two X is gonna be P zero X, P two three X, leg two Y equals P zero Y, P two three Y. So then leg three, like 3x is going to be p to 3x. Actually, it starts at p13. We look at the direction of the vector. The bottom of it is p13. So we'll say p13x, p23x. And then like 3y equals p13y to p23y. And then finally, the floor equals, it starts at zero with the origin, so P zero X, and it goes to P one three. So now here, since we're plotting more than one line, we need to actually write figure, we'll call it figure one. And then after that, we need to put, hold on. And then from there, we'll plot each of the lines. So we need to plot leg two X, leg two Y, That'll be blue. Then plot leg 3x, leg 3y. Say that we want that one red. And then plot leg, sorry, floor x, floor y, green. So let's run that. You can see there it has each one in a different color. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to do that. Like if for some reason your, your mechanism just looks weird or it doesn't connect to itself, then it can be helpful to plot each line in a different color. So then you can figure out which one is the problem line. Where did we get that um, figure code? Is it just a code um, to make the table for? Um, this line 37? Yes. That is just you can you can put whatever number you want there it'll just label it as that figure so that's a that's figure is just a word that matlab knows so you just type that in when you want before you want to have a plot it's more it's most useful if you're going to end up plotting two different images then you'll need to name your figures here we just have one. There's only one thing we're trying to plot. It's the TP, so that's okay. But if we say we wanted to have a T, the TP on one figure, and then we wanted to like show position of our unknowns on another figure, like I don't know, plot like R1 versus theta two as a graph, um, then we would need to name each figure separately. 
All right, so now we want to make our this thing animate. Can we do like zero to something? I don't know. Yeah, so let's see. The TP, generally the TP will start almost vertical. Well, technically it will it will start vertical and then it will go until it's about flat. We don't need to go through the whole range, but let's say we want it to go from like 60 degrees to 30 degrees. Just so we get some animation. So we can actually define starting angle. So let's say we want to start at 60, T2 end, want to end at 30. And then T2 equals, we're going to use the lens space command. You'll want to use this on your project too. So the lens space command creates a linearly spaced vector. So for an example is if we you wanted theta 2 to go from zero all the way around to 360 degrees and you wanted that to be even increments it would be like one degree two degree three degrees you use the lens space i'm sorry do you need uh do you need that pi over 180 in parentheses or no um no but we can okay so lens space it goes from the starting point so t2 start comma t2 end and then however many points so let's say number of points is in in but we need to define in um, if the higher that in is the smoother your motion will be but it also make your code take longer so we'll say in equals um, equals 30. So now, I'll stop here and I'll run it. And let's look at what happened in the workspace this time. So here, T2, one row by 30 columns. It's kind of annoying and hard to see. So let's make it be a column vector. To do that, we just put an apostrophe at the end. So I run. Did yours not bring up a, um, a graph for it? Oh, I put a, not yet. I put that breakpoint right there. Because oh. um, th there's more stuff we have to do before it'll animate. Okay. So we're just making sure that, that it calculated correctly. Okay, so it's got T2 in a column. And let's make sure that R1 and T3 also became columns. So, okay, here, T3 is a column. Good, and R1, also 30 by 1. Okay, so it calculated everything as columns. Now, here, we'll have to actually make a for loop because we want it to plot for every single degree, but then we want to erase the plot for, and then plot the next degree of it so that it'll look like it's moving in a circle or looks like it's moving. So we'll do a for loop, quit debugging. So we need to go for, and we need some counter, we'll just call it count equals one, two, n, because we had n points. So we're gonna have it, we're gonna have n different frames in our animation. Okay, so for count is one to n, now here we need to index. So any variable that's changing, in this case, t2 is changing. We would need to use an indexer, so we'll put parentheses ct. Because since t2 now is an array, then we want it to pick, it's an array is like a long shelf. And we wanted to pick whatever T2 is on the current shelf. 
So each time through the loop, it'll move on to the next shelf. So that'll calculate. So we got the CT there, there. All right, so then we'll type end. And then we'll run this. Okay, it gave us a problem. Let's see, what is that problem? Ah, R1 also needs to be indexed because that is something that changes each time. So we'll put parentheses CT. So if you get, if you get this error, dimensions of arrays being concatenated are not consistent. Probably you forgot to index somewhere. So now we'll run. Okay. So we saw, so y'all could see it was, it was kind of moving, but they're all on the screen now. We don't need all of these lines. So Is there a way to make it slower? Yes. Okay. Let's, so we'll X out of that. The way to make it slower is you type pause. 0 0.1 is going to be 0 0.1 seconds. So we'll run that. Okay. So they're still all on that plot. We need to get it so that they don't do that anymore. So what we do there is after the pause, we'll type CLF. Actually, we can type, we'll type CLF right here. This means clear figure. So what's gonna happen here Okay, so the axes are changing size. We need to stop that from happening. But at least we've got our animation moving. So now to fix these axes. We should like define our uh, domain right or whatever. Yeah, so that would be for the x axis, we'll put x limit. So x lim, open parentheses, bracket, and then it's lower limit, comma, upper limit. So let's say we want it to go from zero to. 20. Y limit also can go 0 to 20. Well, this can go 0 to 15. The scaling looks a little weird. So now let's run this. So if we made the angle go all the way from uh, 90 to 0, it would stretch out to the full 20, right? Yeah, let's, let's make sure. Sometimes, sometimes if you, if things mess up, like you, you hit a singularity, um, basically if you have things that will smack all the way in on each other or be completely flat, it occasionally gives problems. Um, but let's, let's just try it and see if it works. So that one did work. 